Patrick Donigan with Hard and Stance. I'm here with Martin Charbonneau. Martin is head of Quantum Safe Networks with Nokia. Martin, how are you doing today? Hey, fine, Patrick. How about you? Very well indeed. Looking forward to the conversation. Indeed. So, uh, we're here to talk about Quantum Safe Networks and what Nokia is doing in that space. Let's begin. Uh, until a few weeks ago, we had China, South Korea, and the US all building their own post quantum crypto algorithms, PQC algorithms to protect against quantum computers that are powerful enough to break contemporary encryption standards. On April 11th, the European Commission went and published a recommendation. The recommendation was that the EU should develop its own PQC algorithms as well. What do you make of that? What does that do in terms of changing the overall landscape for post-quantum safety? <clears throat> Well, sir, uh, Patrick, this is an interesting first question indeed, right? So first, let's look at the good things out of this, right? So we're seeing global awareness towards the adoption of post-quantum cryptography. Um, this is needed as a response to, you know, scale quantum computers that can break the existing PKI-based encryption. And right. really, this type of encryption is crucial for end-to-end -end data privacy and security in the long run. Uh, but indeed, there's uh, countries, regions that wants to adopt, you know, seems, you know, it seems that they want to adopt their own in whole or in part type of algorithms, uh, probably reflecting unique needs and, um, you know, country region based strategies, desire to drive more control on their own crypto systems, uh, reduce dependencies on foreign technologies and so on. Uh, but the reality of all of this, it, it leads to fragmentation, divergence in the global crypto landscape, right? So it will complicate yeah. standardization, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, I do believe that this movement that we see also underscore the need for international cooperation and standardization activities. Uh, and I take note as well on the UE Commission paper that you referred to, uh, the Roadmap to PQC, Article yeah. 9 actually stressed one key point, a continued need for cooperation in, in international strategic uh, partnerships. So it is a complex issue. There's many nuances, uh, but I think the evolution will be quite interesting to watch. Okay. Um, so if you take the telecom market, which is obviously Nokia's uh, core market, um, new security requirements are both a cost and a revenue opportunity. Let's talk in the first instance about the cost side of the equation. So Nokia has an established uh, security consulting business. Um, what can you offer telcos in terms of helping them audit their cryptographic assets, prioritize their investments, and build a roadmap that has crypto agility built into it? Right. Well, indeed, we do have a, uh, within the Nokia Network Infrastructure Business Group, we do have a network security uh, services practice, like you said, and it's built on the networking pedigree of the corporation, the international presence, and our very focused domain expertise, which is connectivity. Uh, so at the high level, the practice does have three pillars, security design, security assessment, and cybersecurity operation. Uh, in context of the specificity of your question, it's more security assessment type engagement that uh, mm -hmm. we would be doing with customers. Um, and it works kind of in three phases, right? We first audit their network assets. Uh, we try to, to focus on determination of their current, uh, the current risk postures that they, they, they have and they're facing with. Uh, with these findings, we then, you know, in alignment with the customer, prioritize their investments, and actually see what type of action will lead to change and strengthen the security posture. And of course, the last step is we build the appropriate roadmap and then deliver optimized mitigation and design practices so that it can be implemented over time. So it's a truly you know, partnership-driven type of engagement. In addition, in our engagement to focusing on the quantum safe cryptography aspect, we also look at the overall security aspect of the management plane, the data plane, and the control plane. Remember, we are connectivity experts, right? So in that context, our network security practitioners are really committed to remain on top of this evolving threat environment, specifically true in the era that we're entering, the quantum era. Right, that's right. So let's talk then about the the revenue opportunity. So I know when we spoke recently, we we met at the uh, the Quantum Safe um, uh, event in in Paris, which was a very good event. 
Um, uh, so you have a vision of quantum safety as a very particular new kind of business opportunity for telcos, and you call that private managed build services. So where telcos currently serve a, a small subset of businesses with premium encryption services today, you see the quantum safety opportunity as one which telecom operators can capitalize on to deliver private managed build encryption services to many, many more business customers than they currently do. Tell us about that. Articulate right, that right. interest yeah. if you would. You know, okay, well, yeah, absolutely. So look, managed private builds are not really new to telecom operators or managed right. service providers, right? So we tend to think a lot about telecom operators from a retail connectivity services, but the reality is they do have bespoke type solutions for specific curated enterprise segments. So absolutely true what you said. My my vision is that when we talk about quantum safe connectivity, uh, it does present an opportunity for telecom operators and managed service providers to actually focus on delivering, you know, network level encryption to set of, you know, enterprise segments like banking, financial services and insurance, BFSI, healthcare, defense, utilities, and other mission critical infrastructures. These segments, mission critical infrastructures, are really accustomed to, you know, curated, managed type solution, high touch services. Um, the the reality is telecom operators can actually start differentiating today with curated private connectivity offering or connectivity, uh, you know, network quantum safe connections, quantum safe data center interconnect, quantum safe cloud access, and start the journey for the industry with curated solution and then evolve over time to retail connectivity services. So the whole nine yard is all about having a complementary network level encryption that complements the application level type encryption, which we'll know we'll use the PKI based PQC that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So the point of this vision is we can start today. Operators can start today, one link at a time, you know, many links at a time and a sub network at a time curated to a specific set of customers per industries and actually helping them start their transformative journey towards quantum safe readiness. That's okay. it. So, so, okay. So how is, how is Nokia actually going to execute on that from a portfolio perspective, from a delivery perspective, how are you going to enable operators to actually realize what you've just described? Yeah, exactly. So for us, you know, the, the, the approach is really, with regards to the quantum threat, right? The approach is we're leading the engagement with these operators uh, and enterprises, you know, from an outcome-based solution. And it happens that the the name of the solution itself is Quantum Safe Networks. Uh, so it's leading the charge with the desire to reach this outcome. That we believe that this outcome will be valued by enterprises and providers to assure data privacy and data security in the quantum era. Once we anchored correctly that framework. Then we focused on how to realize quantum safe networks using technologies uh -huh. and products from Nokia and partners. So very key to rally the mass that we focus first on the outcome and not the technologies and the product because it gets complex, com you know, very complex, very fast. But right. once we are, we are at the technology and product level engagement, that's where we start focusing on the concepts of quantum safe keys. What are they? How are they? How are they created? How are they distributed? Um, then we talk about encrypted connections at which layer, you know, using the OSI stack, the application layer, the optical layer, the IP layer, MPLS layer, and so on. So we actually develop a narrative so that we can understand the complex landscape and then evolve towards the outcome. Uh, we actually take time to make sure that, you know, from our perspective, QSN, this outcome, quantum safe network, it's not a winner take all. It's not a single technology. It's not a single, you know, crypto enabled layer. It's actually many additive techniques that comes together that form a defense in depth backbone of secure communication in the quantum era. So that's the approach we take. Uh, that's the approach that we see resonates a lot federates a lot of different actors because it, it, it takes the village to actually move forward on the content on the the evolution of the industry towards quantum safe readiness okay now let's uh, let's look at nokia's uh, for, look at this from a, a nokia portfolio perspective nokia obviously has 
mm -hmm. an incredibly broad uh, product portfolio. What does the post quantum uh, safety migration look like from a from a from an internal perspective, from a Nokia product management perspective? Right, where do you right. start? How do you even figure out where to start? <laughs> and what principles do you bring to that migration across the portfolio? Yeah, that's a very good one as well. Very good question, Patrick. So look, we're, we're not a newcomer on this topic. So we had the luxury of actually developing over past decades, you know, for from an optical division perspective, highly secure transport solutions for bespoke type opportunities. So we've developed, you know, an organic culture to approach complex topic like this. So let me tell you like in three phases what the way we do it and the way we see how we can propagate this throughout our overall portfolio ecosystem here at Nokia. So first, we focus on our people. You know, it all it is a people game at the end, right? So it starts with people. So focusing, you know, on keywords and key concepts. Like what do we mean when we say quantum safe connectivity? What do we mean when we say defense in depth with layered cryptography? where we apply network level encryption at IP and or optical and complement application level encryption. What are the nuance of all of this? What do we mean by we, when we say quantum safe resiliency, where we, we focus on the usage of mathematics-based quantum safe encryption, but also physics-based uh, crypto system with classical physics and this evolution towards quantum uh, key distribution. So the first step is really establishing a common language, a baseline understanding. And let me tell you, this, this demands a lot of effort. But once we, we tackle that first step, then we focused on this outcome-based framework that I talked about. Uh, we, we rally the groups uh, by focusing first that there is an outcome that we need to strive to achieve. Uh, we're not, again, starting with technologies or product portfolio. We're focusing on the outcome, and then we apply our portfolios of products, our portfolios of products, and the enabling technologies to realize that outcome. By that approach, we see that that federates a lot of people. We gain, you know, in common understanding, and we actually rapidly advance towards realizing the outcome. Uh, we also, this approach also helps demystifying the interplays between different technologies and different products. It also helps us identifying that for realizing the outcome, we actually need to, to actually welcome complementary technology and product partners inside of our ecosystem for our enterprises and service providers to realize right. the maximum of that outcome as well. So an outcome-based type approach framework. And third, thirdly, we focus, right? You need to bring focus from a go-to-market perspective. And that's where I go back to the manage private build manage private connectivity. It's not the only point, but I truly believe that that's a nice insertion point, a rapid acceptance in the industry and developing proof points upon which the industry can veer towards adopting quantum safe connectivity. So in summary, for us, the winning recipe, people uh, aligning on a outcome-based framework, embracing collaboration, uh, having an initial focus that expands over time, and far more. You know, the best thing is realizing that this is a journey. This is not a tactical point event, and then you're you're done. This will be a journey where yeah. one needs to listen a lot, be able to adapt, reshape the value, and then make sure that enterprises and service providers are well equipped to offer a resilient, future-proof, secure communication infrastructure in this quantum era that we're we're just you know starting. And that's well, so absolutely fantastic talking to you today. Thanks ever so much for your time. Really enjoyed the conversation. All right. Thank you, sir. Anytime. Thanks very much indeed.